Thank you, Master, for this assembly. Thank you because it will be an abomination for us to come into your presence and not feel you at all. So we are grateful for this tiny, visible presence we feel. This anointing, this, this, this fire, this power, this glory. Thank you because your people are inside the glory now. And the Bible says, a fire devoured before them. And behind them a flame burned. The land before them is like a garden of Eden. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. Father, I am convinced that no affliction shall escape today. No pain shall escape today. No challenge shall escape today. Let it be, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Receive his visitation. Something has happened already. A chain has been broken. A yoke has been broken. Deliverance has been wrought. Intervention has happened. Something happened to somebody. Will you give him a, 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 a shout of hallelujah seven times? One, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. here this morning to the blessing Sunday of the month of May you know every time you go towards an evil place like a nightclub like beer parlor like native doctors anytime you go near an evil place you feel the presence of evil is that right in fact, there are evil forests in some villages where people, when they come near there, they don't walk, they run because of the thickness of evil presence. It is not correct for us to go to the presence of God and not feel God. That is why it's absolutely exciting for me today and in all services that we come here, we feel God. We come here, it is clear that God is there. Very, very quickly. It's a blessing Sunday. In our month of excellence and authority in greater glory. And I am speaking on the subject. Blessing for the top. Anybody believe you are going to the top? Say a loud amen blessing for the top Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass 
if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. He will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And these blessings come upon you and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. The Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth and this blessing shall come on you. Our objective is to understand the relationship between the blessing of God and the top position in life. What is the connection between the blessing of God and the top position in life? It is clear throughout scripture that the blessing of God is a vehicle to the top position in life and destiny. The blessing of God is a vehicle that takes people to the top positions of life and of destiny. The blessing of God transforms non-entities into generational celebrities. People that are written of that are zero can be taken by the blessing of God and they are turned into generational celebrities. If you shall hearken to the voice of your, the Lord your God, he will set you on high and all these blessings shall follow you. He will set you on high. The blessing of God turns victims to victors and captives into captains. Throughout scripture you will find out that the blessing of God has the capacity to turn victims to victors and to turn captives to captains. Generationally. The blessing of God turns destitutes to dignitaries and it turns paupers to princes. We'll see the examples very soon. People that were destitutes, placeless non-entities, people that had no place on the earth, the blessing of God takes these destitutes and turns them into dignitaries. It's called the blessing of God and it turns paupers to princes. The blessing of God produces outstanding stars out of ordinary men. Ordinary men, ordinary people are turned into outstanding stars by the blessing of God. Do we have any example? Yes. Abraham was in an entity turned into a celebrity. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 5. Abraham was a destitute turned into a dignitary. Then it flowed to Isaac. Then it flowed to Jacob who wandered in Laban's house for 12, for 21 years. Then it flowed to Joseph. Then it flowed and we saw it in Job. So are you looking for a captive turned captain? A, vagab a, 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 a vagabond turned victor? A destitute turned dignitary? You look at Abraham, you look at Isaac, you look at Jacob. 
You look at Joseph, you look at Job. Joseph was a slave prisoner in a foreign land that God turned into something by the virtue of the blessing of God. Somebody is being turned into something here today. A louder amen. Somebody say a louder amen. It is when people don't understand history that they repeat history, especially negative history. It's when people don't understand history, what has happened before, that they end up as miseries. The study of nations show the impact and the import of the blessing of God. What is called the mechanical revolution in Europe sparked, was sparked off by the Martin Luther Revol Reformation. That was when, as that light of the just shall live by faith came about the Middle Ages, thereabout, that was when the mechanical revolution kicked off with the invention of the Wittenberg Press that was used to translate the first Bible from Greek to Latin Vulgate. In other words, as the light of God flooded, as the anointing came and the blessing came, all of a sudden the minds of people opened to begin to do what they never did before. What was called the Industrial Revolution. In England and Europe generally came on the heels of the John Wesley revival, the Wesleyan revival. From that revival, the minds of people opened and then Europe came up and, and then Britain especially. The blessing of God's presence in the land of Britain, that blessing gave them the power to disciple the whole world. If you have ever heard of John Wesley, he's from England. You have ever heard of Charles Wesley, he's from England. You have ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth, he's from England. You have ever heard of John Knox, give me Scotland or I die. He's from the United Kingdom, behind the Presbyterian Church. If you have ever heard of Praying Hyde from the same place. If you have ever heard of Charles Haddon Spurgeon, is from the same place. If you have ever heard of Evan Roberts that was behind the Wales Revival, it was from the same England. And this anointing rested in that land with God's presence. And it, they used it to shake the wall. Colonized America, colonized Nigeria, India, China partly, and any nation of note in the world by the anointing. Forget that they are saying things and doing things now that does not line up with the original foundation. Forget about that. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? By the presence. Take God out of this world. It's a useless world. Take Jesus out. The only thing you may have is terrorism and killing of people. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to anybody at all? What took Britain, a small nation, to the top? The blessing of God's presence. What of America? Please take yourself. That literally became the number one nation after Britain. They founded their country and their official motto was in God and is in God we trust. God bless America is a song that they sing in the White House. Am I communicating? And no wonder. Today they have the prayer breakfast currently at, the, at, at, at their official government quarters and called for prayer several times from George Washington to Abraham Lincoln. And the blessing of God's presence in America made America the number one nation of the earth by the power of the blessing. What are we talking about? The blessing has the capacity to take people up. If that country is having any challenge now, 
and they are getting jittery about the rise of China. I'm sure it's possible because they have started backsliding. And China, Christians are coming up in mass, in millions. Somebody is going to the top. If you are that one, say loud, amen. amen. If you are that one, say the loudest, amen. amen. At the end of the Korean War, of 25th of June, 1950, to the 27th of July, 1953, three years brutal war that tore apart Korea, North and South. South Korea was a proper third world country, properly impoverished. Only one road passed through the whole country from North to South, one road. Feeding was a struggle. People were dying of hunger. I read that they had to plant and wait for harvest before they had what to eat, Korea, South Korea. Today, South Korea is not a second world, it's first world. Among the Asian tigers, aggressively industrialized countries, one of the 20 strongest economies in the world because of church growth revival that sparked off by the ministry of a man called Young Cho and took that Buddhist country and literally turned it into a Christian country. Am I speaking to somebody here? And everything changed from back of the, of the park to the front of the park by the blessing of God residential. Who said that God does not make a difference? Who said that Jesus does not make a difference? Who said that the church does not make a difference? Who said that the anointing does not make a difference. Somebody shout power. <laughs> Help me tell three people around you, tell them God makes the difference. Jesus makes the difference in your life, in your family, and in your destiny. And I prophesy in our nation, Nigeria, Jesus shall make the difference. Jesus shall make the difference. Jesus shall make the difference. Somebody shout power. Take your seat. Is God speaking to anybody here? For almost 2,000 years, Israel disappeared as a nation and reappeared only about 70 years ago and, be, and, 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 and became built as a nation from everywhere they gathered. But the blessing of Abraham never left. A handful of people, when they fought all their dangerous seven-day wars and all those wars, they were just a handful of people. Nothing. But they whipped everybody around them. Today, Israel is not more, more than 5 million people. That is like one of the states in Nigeria. One of the states in Nigeria. They are 60% desert. That Israel is not a regional power. It's a global, a global force to reckon with. If they, we are not doing this, United Nations can do nothing. Anybody threatening them is because they have left those people alone. They can wipe them out in one night. People think America is strong. Some strength of America is in Israel. America look to Israel for in-flight security. <laughs> Woo! It is called the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Isaac, and the blessing of Je The population of the people around them is about a hundred million put together. They were only about, they are only about five million. Their economy is stronger than all of them put together. Their military is stronger than all of them put together. The blessing, the work. Ay, 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 ay. It is working for somebody here today. It is working for somebody here today. It is taking somebody to the top today. Somebody shout, I am going up. No devil can keep me down. Shout it louder. 
I am going up. That is why some of us are sentenced to serving this God forever. There is no substitute to God that is reasonable. One of my friends went to India. <laughs> he was preaching to Hindu people. He looked at them and said, this cow and all these snakes is what you people venerate as your God. You know, you can't touch cow there. Move about. It's, it's, they are the things they venerate as their deities. Cow and all these things. He said, look at your God. If he poop now, can he clean himself? <laughs> he goes to the toilet, can he clean himself? No. If you say, come, you answer, more. <laughs> Something that has no brain is what you are worshipping. He can't take care of himself. You call him your God. Somebody carve wood, carve wood, carve altar, carve everything, put it down, and begins to bow to it. What he carved with his own hand. You know, there are people who carry their God in their pocket. The God is small enough to be inside pocket. Their, their power is in their pocket. Their power is their ring in their hand. It's their power. My own God is too big to be pocketed. Hey! Oh, no, 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 no. He's too massive. He said, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my first. This God your God, my God, he will take you to the top. Take your seat. The first dollar billionaire in the history of the world, dedication to God took him up. First oil and gas billion, multi-billionaire, he took him up. Dedication. Tithing from one dollar took him up. Now today, they said, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, right? And um, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. These three people are about the richest people in the world. We think come about a hundred billion. They're about above. It has been confirmed that these three people, if they put their money together, it's not up to the money he had. Calculating by today's inflation rate, it's not up to the money he had. is since then see he is the same yesterday today and forever don't play with God he will still take you anyone today to the top in any realm somebody say amen very very quickly because of time how does the blessing of God take people up I don't know about you, but I am I'm going up. In fact, I'm already up. Who is up? Who is up? Who is up? <laughs> Number one, the blessing of God establishes the presence of God in the life of the blessed. When we say a person is blessed, that person carries the presence of God with him. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, we saw how God was speaking to Abraham and he said, walk before me. Walk. After this is the word of the Lord came up to Abraham and said, fear not, sorry. I am thy shield. Shield means I am I'm surrounding you. Genesis 17 1, he said, walk before me and be thou perfect. Abraham the blessed, my presence is with you. 
Genesis 35 and in verse 5, for Jacob, he said, as they journeyed, the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they could not pursue after the sons of Jacob. God was with them. Concerning Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 2, and the Lord was with Joseph. Verse 21, and the Lord was with Joseph. The blessing of God, it places the presence of God around the life of the blessed. You see, and the presence of God, it destroys limitations and creates access to anywhere. When the blessing, when the presence of God is on your life, it destroys family limitations, ancestral limitations, societal limitations, climatic limitations, limitations around your life and destiny, and gives you opening or access anywhere you want to go. Destroys limitations and creates access. The blessing takes you up by putting around you God's presence. When you see a really blessed person, when they appear, you feel God. Am I communicating? Number two, the blessing of God establishes the favor of God around the blessed. When, it's, when we say a person is blessed, that person carries a favor that is unusual. He carries a favor that is different. Psalm 12 verse 5, the Lord will bless the righteous with favor Will you compass him about as with a shield? We saw Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 23. And of Naphtali, he said, Oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, and what else? Full with the blessing of the Lord, possessed thou the west and the south. So when you are blessed, you carry favor. And when you connect favor, you access influence. Favor brings influence and authority. When God gives you favor, he sets you in position. That was what happened to Esther. In Esther chapter 2 and in verse 15. And God gave Esther, the queen, favor. It was her turn and she obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked on her. That favor made her the queen of the Persian Empire. Also, favor was one of the secrets of Joseph. In Acts chapter 7 verse 10, the favor of God on the life of Joseph was one of the things that Pharaoh used to position him. Am I communicating? When you get the blessing, the blessing establishes around you the presence of God. The presence of God breaks your limitation, gives you access. Secondly, when you get the blessing, the blessing of God gives you favor. That favor gives you influence and gives you authority. You are easily positioned. You don't struggle. When others are lobbying, you lobby for nothing. You are just there on your own and things look for you. Is God speaking to somebody here? You are just on your own by yourself and things are looking for you. I prophesy to somebody here. What others are looking for is going to look for you after this service. Positions that others are lobbying for. Connections that others are looking for shall look for you after this service. By the blessing of God, the blessing of God establishes the presence. Number two, the blessing of God establishes the favor. Number three, the blessing of God establishes the wisdom of God in the life of the blessed. Wisdom. Wisdom. How do I know? Daniel chapter 2 verse 30 but as for me this sorry verse 20 Daniel answered and said blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his to be blessed is to carry wisdom blessed is the Lord why wisdom is his one of the reasons why God is blessed is because he has wisdom. <laughs> wisdom and might are his. 
To be blessed is to carry wisdom. That same wisdom of the blessed manifested in the life of Joseph in, Dan in Genesis 41, 39. Where Pharaoh said, as God has revealed all this to you, it is confirmed that there is none as wise as you. God speaking to somebody here, say amen. So the wisdom, the, when you are blessed, unusual ideas that are not normal, world governing ideas, breakthrough ideas, creativity, innovation, inventiveness. Don't think of the blessing only in terms of money. God sends somebody to give you money. When God blesses you, he will give you an idea that can generate a billion, a billion euros, a billion dollars. He will give you an idea that can build an estate. He will give you a revelation that can, that can release solution to your nation and put you in position. So when we say blessing, people are just thinking of how much money God will give me. No, he will give you just one direction, one revelation, one idea overnight. It changes your life, changes your family, changes your state, changes your nation. And for somebody, that idea is coming right now. <laughs> Lift your trust and say, I am, I am blessed. Loudest, I am blessed. I am blessed. <laughs> Take your seat. You know the computer world is a world of ideas. Am I communicating? The man who, who is now number one in wealth worldwide, when he started, he has no physical shop. He only links you up with where to buy the things. And just went from the back to the front by some ideas. You see, when God blesses you, he opens your mind. It gives you wisdom. Then the wisdom grants you stardom. Grants you what? It is from wisdom to stardom. From being wise, you end as a star. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. For a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. The boldness of his countenance shall be increased. Wisdom speaking in it. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15. He said, by me kings rule and princes decree justice. God gives you wisdom by the reason of his blessing. That wisdom gives you ideas that usher you into stardom. Gives you direction, creativity, inventiveness that ushers you into rulership. Somebody get ready. Before this week is out, a divine idea that will change your life will come your way. Somebody get ready. A revelation, an understanding, a counsel that will change your level shall come your way. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are receiving it, shout, I receive three times. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to anybody here? So number one, divine presence. Number two, divine favor. Number three, wisdom. Number four, the blessing of God triggers the release of potentials. It triggers the release of potentials from the life of the blessed. That is, when God blesses you, your gifts come out. Your gifts. Your gifts. What you carry inside. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful. That is, whatever I put into you, bring it out. Multiply it. Replenish it. Subdue you, it's Satan, you dominate.
<laughs> Hallelujah. Just ensure that you push it out, push it out, push it out, push it out, oh, until you take charge. I heard someone say, any gift God gives you, it was Bill Winston. He said, release it until you take it to a genius level. Genesis 9-1, God blessed Noah, asked them to be fruitful, to multiply. Genesis 41, verse 15 and 16, we saw Joseph the blessed. Pharaoh was telling him, I heard that you can dream a dream and that you can... I have dreamt a dream and there is none to interpret and I have heard that you can understand the dream to interpret it. Joseph, by the blessing of God, released the potentials inside him. And what is... Why is potential necessary? Your potentials are the secrets of your liftings and opportunities. The man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before kings. Your liftings, Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Your liftings and your potentials. That was what happened to David. We already read it in Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. All the way to verse 16. Pharaoh sent for Joseph from the prison. N not because he was, not just because he was, he was a child of God, but because he had a gift that no other person had. The same thing with David. First Samuel chapter 16. Verse 17 to 18. Am I communicating? First Samuel 16, verse 17 to 18, and then verse 19. Sorry, and then verse 21. Let me say this. Even though David was a godly person, he was a warrior, he was a fighter, he was everything. What took him to the palace for the first time was his gift. There is one man who can play instrument more than everybody. Saul said, bring him. Let, him. let him cure me of schizophrenia. Let him cure me of a manic depressive illness. Let him cure me of bipolar disorder. Today I'm, I'm happy now. Next time I'm, I want to kill somebody. Bring the man. Until he almost killed David himself. <laughs> it is, you see... Many of us thank God for our spirituality, but back your spirituality with your potentiality. And it will grant you productivity and authority. <laughs> you see, David was a worshiper. He knew to do many things, but that was not what took him to the palace. It was his skill, his skill, his talent, his ability. Am I communicating at all? When God opens the door for you, what they are looking for is not how many hours can you speak in tongues. When that door opens, what can you bring to the table? Or God waiting where you carry for head. There are so many people who got opportunities and they were so spiritual until they sack them. <laughs> that is upside down spirituality. Blasting in tongues and reading the Bible do when they should be doing the work of the office. And then they, they, have, no, they have no idea. They have, they, have, they have moved their organization in no direction. They have not brought forth nothing. And they say, this man is a liability, not an asset. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Americans will say, I am preaching good right now. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor by you. Say, what do you carry? Say, what do you want to bring? What do you, you bring? Come table. <laughs> this one is moving his leg. He said, he carry leg. <laughs> he carry dance. <laughs> well, go ahead and market it. <laughs> 
the blessing of God triggers. And finally, the blessing of God grants supernatural speed. It grants super, or rather, right, it facilitates supernatural speed in the life of the blessed. When God has blessed you, your speed changes. Your speed changes. Genesis 26, verse 12 to 13. And the Lord blessed him. Isaac sowed in that land. He received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. He went forward. Why? God blessed him. When you are blessed, you, you acquire speed. And what will speed do for you? Speed will grant you impact and exploit. When a man has speed, he achieves in a short time what others take a lifetime to achieve. Speed gives you impact and exploit. So much is accomplished in a very short time. And when you have exploit and you have impact, you naturally arrive on top. Naturally arrive in the front. You don't struggle, you just arrive there. What is the competition between a Lexus and a, a trailer? They are struggling on the, together. No way. Just why the trailer is doing. This one, this. Bye. You know, one day I was on the road in town and I saw a trailer, uh, a, a tipper moving. Vroom, the noise as, was as if it was landcraft. If you are if you are making such a noise and you fl you, you took off, it's okay. That's the base of aircraft, <laughs> and you took off in the air. The noise is justified. But it was vroom, and it was on the ground. Vroom, just, just Lando craft, and then a car just passed, and it just went its way. And I looked and I received the instruction that is not everybody making noise that is making progress. <laughs> Not everybody making noise is making progress. There are people, the noise is more than the progress. So I avoid the company of noise makers and just connect the company of news makers. I realize that noise is not the same as speed. except with the aircraft. And at the, at the time comes with the aircraft where you don't hear the noise anymore. Well, you are inside, you don't hear the noise. But the noise is far more than justified by the speed and the flight. Somebody say amen. amen. Take your seat. Anybody ready for that blessing today? That will grant you the presence of God. Give you the favor of God. Give you the wisdom of God. Cause your potentials to come out and make you on your marks. Get set. Is there anybody about to take off with speed? Anybody about to take off with speed? Shout, yes! Take your seat. Quickly. And let me appeal to you. Until we share that grace, make up your mind. To, hear, to be here until that blessing lands on your head. First secret is a life of obedience to God. 
if you shall hearken diligently. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 2. To the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. He will set you on high. Verse 13 said, you shall be the head. He shall make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and you shall not be beneath. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. amen. The blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. You access it with a life of obedience, unconditional obedience. God spoke to Abraham and Abraham departed. Every area of your life where you are arguing with God, where you are negotiating commandments, when you want to serve God at your own terms, right? When you want to have your way and do things how you want it, you are disconnected, disconnected from the blessing. Listen, the Bible has already set for us a standard. Everybody is to adjust their life to meet with the standard. You don't adjust the Bible to meet your standard. You ain't saying nothing. That is what our generation tries to do. That is what, oh, the Bible doesn't really mean, no, 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 it's okay. God is not that strict. No, God is not that wicked. Never. You, you adjust yourself to meet the Bible. You don't adjust the Bible to come to your level. Where he leads me, I will go in the army. Where he leads me, I will go in the army. Where he leads me, I will go in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. The Lord knows my way. Through the way darkness. All I need to do is to follow Him. My God knows the way through the way darkness. Oh, all I have to do is to follow him follow 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 i will follow i mean if you have ever seen where they say follow 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 this woman is following her husband to follow 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 everything yes sir everything yes sir but follow, follow can make things follow you. <laughs> Who you follow determines what follows you. Follow, 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 follow. I will follow Jesus. Everywhere, everywhere. Every time, every time. I will follow him. University undergraduate who were follow, 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 follow. They thought we were stupid. Our age mates were squandering their lives in nightclubs, in party discos, in all manner of measures. Follow, 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 follow. See where they follow, follow led. And the journey is still on. Don't be afraid of follow, follow. If they have not said your own church is too much, you have not started. Follow, 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 follow. You people used to sing for this other song. Follow, 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 follow. It's a good song, girl. 
and the children like it very well. Very soon you will sing it for us to follow, 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 follow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please take your seat. Follow, follow like that. It will make the world of difference. A life of obedience. Number two, a life with a clear conscience before God. Clear conscience. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5. He said, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands, a pure heart. The one who has not lifted up his soul to vanity. He has not sworn deceitfully. That one shall receive the blessing of the Lord. Hear me? To go up, you must have a clear conscience. To gain speed, you must drop your weight. To go up in life, you must have a clear conscience. And to gain speed, drop your weight. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. He said, Wherefore sin we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which thought so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Lay aside the weight so you can run the race. Somebody say amen. Drop your weight so you can gain your speed. For somebody that weight is tobacco smoking, alcohol. Hey. I was told of a village where their cash crop, what they plant is Indian hemp. That's a whole community that is Indian hemp. Children drink it for breakfast. Demonic, I said, we need to rush to such a place that every house, every compound has a shrine. Indian hemp. But even the people who should keep the law go there to buy the hemp. No. Maybe it is smoking. Maybe it is alcohol. Maybe your weight is a man you are living with that has not married you. Maybe your weight is a woman. Maybe your weight is a lion. Maybe your weight is false declaration of age. Maybe your weight is false visa document. Wait. Anything that your conscience cannot account for is a weight. That weight will not just end you in hell. After this world, it will slow you down on earth first. Slow you down. Slow you down. Somebody using another person's result who has died. That is a weight. The result is not yours, but you say it's yours. It's a weight. Stealing money from the office is a weight. Stealing money in the church is a weight that will take you to hell, slow you down. There are people who are wondering what is slowing me down. Some people is bitterness, unforgiveness. People you are holding in your heart as if you want, you can almost follow them to the grave. Today, that weight shall drop so that a blessing can come. So it's a life with a clear conscience. Number three, it's a life of soul winning. Soul winning. Somebody is asking, how is this coming here? It's scripture. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. He said, Behold, see how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation. Anybody who is a bringer of good tidings has his place on the mountains. Romans chapter 8 verse 13 bears it witness. Ten thirteen. 
Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, without somebody talking to them? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel and bring glad tidings of good things. The Old Testament showed us that their feet is on the mountain. If you want God to take you to the top, Bring good tidings to your generation. I give you just two examples, contemporary. I, I, I'm going to trust God to find the name of a man who wrote a book. I believe it is the best book so far I read on evangelism. Somehow I can't remember the, the author. This man is an American multi-billionaire. A multi-millionaire. Maybe he's a billionaire now. He said, while he's on his evangelistic field, as he's going for business trips, He's giving tracts. He's preaching to people. He's talking to business associates. While he's doing that, bam, business ideas will open. Directions, inspiration will come. Until he ended in multiple millions of American dollars. Became a counselor of American presidents. God took him to the top. Am I communicating? This is Sunday service. I heard the story of a man who was looking for money to register a company. At that time, it appears to me like it, is, it was 5,000 Naira to register a company. If I mention the organization of that man in this country, you will know what name we tell the organization. He was lying on the bare floor with his wife, no money. Then he said to God, if you give me money to register a company, the first three jobs I am going to get with that company, I will give it to you. God brought him the money, I think it was 5,000. He registered a company. First job that came, was around 500,000 naira. He gave all of it to God. Second job, 1.5 million. He gave all that to God. Third job was a temptation. It was about 5 billion. What will I do? He fulfilled this agreement with God. Build churches in the Northeast. Posted missionaries there. Gave all that to God. Then the heaven opened. Bam! He goes to the mission field himself. As a Naira billionaire. Supervising what the people are seeing that they are doing well. Seeing that nobody is hungry. How beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those. Don't live for yourself. Otherwise you live for small. Live for God, then you live for large. Many people, you have heard of the man called Billy Graham. The only reason for Billy Graham's life was soul winning. He was at Wembley Stadium in London for 88 days, crusade daily for three months. He was in that big square in New York that can sit 100,000 people. Madison Square Garden. It was in Madison Square. It started originally with about five weeks and the crusade went into about 12 to 13 weeks every night. He knew nothing but preaching. You know what happened to this man? He came to the point where for about 34 consecutive years, the world's most influential people, his name was on the list for 34 years without break. 
If they say 100, it was there, no matter the number. Where they receive the queen at the airport in England is where they receive him. This man was counselor to every American president in his lifetime. Dwight Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Richard Nixon, Gerard Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, George H. Bush, the, the, the senior Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, I think Barack as well. Every single one of them in his lifetime, he counseled, prayed for them, gave them directions. They won't go to war until he gave a counsel or offered a prayer. That was what evangelism took him. Beloved, don't live for yourself. It will take you up. Come into church on Sunday morning without having anybody in mind. It's not a correct way to live. Enjoying God without thinking of others, especially the thousands getting lost, is not the correct way to live. That is the life of soul winning. It's not one of the things that, we mention, that is popularly mentioned, but it takes people up. And finally, a life of covenant practice. Covenant practice. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. He said, bring all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now. Herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Verse 12 now. And all nations shall call you blessed. That is, you come to a point where nations will reckon with you. For you shall be a delight. Sometimes I will position you in distinction. In your practice of covenant. Say, saith the Lord of hosts. I don't have the time to tell you about David, uh, Solomon. In Psalm 72, verse 10, all the way to verse 12. If you go, verse 15, if you get home, you read it. Told you of John D. Rockefeller, I told you of William Colgate of the Colgate Toothpaste. Covenant practice took him up. Wallace Johnson of the Holiday Inns. R.G. R. G. Lutonor, who manufactured the equipment that American soldiers used in the Second World War. Earth moving machines, earth moving equipment, all the things that American Army engineers used. In the Second World War, this man was the manufacturer. He is a solid, concrete believer in the Lord who was a faithful giver, faithful tighter. He went up as an inventor and as a business magnet by the practice of the covenant. Don't let anybody deceive you. Facts, especially the truth, they don't lie. Today, somebody is going up. Say a louder amen. amen. Testimonies that abounded today, the young man who <laughs> saw who to marry, but he was not bold enough because the spirit is willing, but the pocket was not ready. And, and he said he had opportunity to sow to us last, last year when this project was coming towards conclusion. And <laughs> everything opened. Uh, on our seat there, they told us, I think they have their own house now. Their own house, their own house. Not rented. House, land, bought, property built. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? He's taking you, you are going up. You are going up. You are going up. In a short while, as we typically do myself and 
God's handmaiden, Dr. Mrs. Becky and Nature, will, will, will declare the blessing on your head, on your life as it is with us. And I believe that in this season, something will change. Please, don't take a step. For that is why you came to church, until that blessing rests on your head. Lift up your hands and give the Lord the praise for what you have received. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the worship, the supremacy, the dominion, the rule, the sovereignty. Go on and worship him. Go on and honor him. Go on and adore him. Go on and glorify him. We praise you. We honor you.